And this is where I have to get to my one embarrassing mistake in all of this. See, my defense against rich people like Logan Paul is media insurance, you know, for frivolous lawsuits. So when I was sued, I immediately called my insurance company to file a claim so I wouldn't have to pay for it. But they told me they're not gonna pay. They're trying to get out of covering us using lawyers in fine print. It's a long story that I will be explaining on my second channel because insurance underwriting is very boring. But suffice to say, I got Dylan Danist. I may have even gotten scammed. I'm not quite sure. For now, the bottom line is we have to fight Logan with our personal funds. Right, now we're gonna shift gears and talk about the final part of this lawsuit. Why did Logan Paul sue me now? It's been over a year since he apologized and thanked me. Thank you, CoffeeZilla. I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. And I mean that. Thank you, bro. It might seem strange, but I've got some fun facts for you that may or may not be related. Did you know, six days before the lawsuit, I had featured Logan Paul in a teaser for a video? Did you know 21 hours before the lawsuit, I had texted Logan for comment? Did you know I told him he had 24 hours to respond and Logan sued me three hours before the deadline? Yep, that's right. Logan's lawyers then threatened me in that lawsuit email that if I report on this new story, Logan might hold me accountable. And Logan's definition of accountability seems to mean he'll sue me, which is why I believe this lawsuit was not designed to win, but to shut me up, to threaten me, using Logan's wealth and a federal court system without anti-slap to send a message. Do not tell that story. Of course, I don't believe that's the only reason I was sued. Clearly, Logan wanted to sue me for a while, but I believe this new investigation played a role in pulling the trigger. Maybe Logan's team will deny this. Maybe they'll say it's coincidence they sued three hours before a deadline. Maybe it's coincidence I announced a story about Logan six days before, and maybe it's coincidence that Logan's lawyers threatened me about this new story while suing me for the last story that I hadn't discussed in six months but I don't think so. Either way, when someone threatens new reporting in a lawsuit about old reporting, the effect is the same. So, what was this new story? Well, it's partly about a Canadian law enforcement investigation, and it's partly about something I told Logan to help him. Yes, believe it or not, I tried to help Logan Paul. To explain, we need to go back to when CryptoZoo first got exposed. Logan said he was going to sue me, but got backlash. So he called me to apologize. He said he was wrong and wanted to make things right. I made it clear, refunds are the absolute right move going forward, and to my surprise, he agreed. 100%, man. We're on the same page. But we weren't. Logan now doesn't use the word refund. He calls this a buyback. But at the time, I need you to understand, I thought Logan was going to announce a full refund, so I began trying to help him. And dare I say, I was even nice to the guy. You can see that I tried to offer people who might be able to trace blockchain damages to refund people. And in the same spirit, I made Logan aware of potential problems at a different company he co-owned called Liquid Marketplace. On a platform that I co-founded called Liquid Marketplace, it allows co-ownership of top tier assets. So instead of one person, me owning this card, we as a collective can co-own it together. This was a fractionalized collectible platform where Logan sold things like roughly half of a $5 million Pokemon card. The idea was you could buy tokens that represented partial ownership in rare collectibles. Uh, that video, by the way, got 8 million views. And a lot of people bought into this platform. The problem was I had heard troubling stories about this company and I was trying to verify if the claims were true. So I had gone to the CEO, Ryan Bahadori, to ask him questions, but he kept dodging meetings. And I don't mean he refused meeting with me. I mean, we would set up meetings and then he did not show up. So I was troubled and I brought this up to Logan. I figured if he's gonna make one company right, make them all right. Otherwise it might come back to bite him. I mean, can you imagine the disaster if another one of Logan Paul's co-founded companies was discovered to have scammed his fans? Hypothetically, that would be a very bad look. So I'm thinking while he refunds CryptoZoo, Logan can push the CEO to talk with me and I can figure out the truth. Maybe Logan can fix it if there's something wrong. And you can see Logan responds to me. He says, gonna push Ryan to talk to you. Again, appreciate it, man. Now, I don't hear back from Ryan or Logan about this, so after a while, I follow up again. I say, let me know if Ryan plans on talking. A lot of nasty stories still out there about liquid marketplace, embezzlement, etc., and he's dodged meeting me already once. Now, obviously, the most shocking part of this is the word embezzlement. I need to make it clear. 
This is not an accusation. I am not accusing Logan Paul or Liquid Marketplace of wrongdoing. I brought it up in our texts because it is my job to investigate unverified claims. That's the whole point of me wanting to meet with the CEO, but I was stonewalled. Logan never replied, despite me reminding him again via email five months later that I wanted to talk to Ryan about, quote, embezzlement and, quote, potential fraud. Once again, not accusing anyone of wrongdoing, I'm simply doing my job at the time to chase down rumors and unverified claims. Without concrete proof, I would have never talked about any of this. But on June 19th, 2024, things changed because the Ontario Securities Commission revealed a liquid marketplace investigation where they accused Liquid Marketplace of being a multi-layered fraud, taking in $2.7 million from the sale of these fractionalized collectibles. The platform allegedly did not do exactly what it promised. Some of the blockchain tokens did not even mint. But even worse was the allegation that approximately $3 million was misappropriated from $10 million they raised of investor funds. This is a very similar claim to the one I had tried to verify. Ryan Bahadori, the guy I tried to speak to, was accused of, quote, making hidden payments to shell corporations without any legitimate business purpose, as were two other of the founders. And Ryan was accused of, quote, using company credit cards to buy high-end fashion, expensive jewelry and watches, personal health and luxury spa services. If only there was someone who could have investigated this sooner. Now, it is really important to say, Logan Paul is not accused by the OSC. Only three of his co-founders and his company is. But given the history, I had questions. After all, Logan's promotional video about Liquid Marketplace is still up. And the reason many people cared about Liquid Marketplace at all was arguably Logan Paul. So here were my questions. And as I read this, it's important to correct. I say Liquid Marketplace got accused of embezzlement. Technically, the OSC alleged misappropriation of funds. Those are similar, they're not the same. So I wanted to correct that. But here's what I asked. Quote, did you take any action on hearing these allegations over a year ago? Did you get approached by the Ontario Securities Commission? And is it true that Liquid Marketplace lied about their claims of insurance, appraisals, and co-ownership as the Ontario Securities Commission alleges? You can see I gave him 24 hours to respond on June 26th at 2.03 p.m. And I was promptly sued June 27th at 11.28 a.m with roughly three hours to spare. Now, I wanna be clear. I don't know the answers to the questions I sent. Maybe Logan secretly whistle blew to the OSC when I first went to him. I don't know. That's why you ask questions as a reporter. But now the story is not about those questions. It's about why I was sued immediately after asking them and threatened if I reported about Liquid Marketplace in a way they didn't like. This is not how I wanted this story to come out because there's still so much we don't know and so much I can't say now for legal reasons. Maybe Logan's totally innocent. Maybe he surrounded himself with scumbags who defrauded his fans. Maybe he'll do a refund for this project. I don't know because I never got the chance to find out. I tried to investigate, but I was stonewalled and sued when I asked questions. Make no mistake though, this investigation is still ongoing. So in summary, Logan's lawsuit is not about my original reporting into CryptoZoo. Even if you take this lawsuit on its own without context, it's an argument over Logan not refunding victims in full. It's Logan insisting he's not to blame. It's all his business partner's fault. But I don't think that aligns with the publicly known facts. That's my opinion. For years, Logan has controlled CryptoZoo, and yet the game is still not out. Logan is now blaming the government for that, instead of himself. And he also blames me for losing his good reputation, but you can't lose something you never had. Not to mention, Logan is arguably richer than ever, and he's on the record finding my reporting thorough and good-hearted. So this defamation lawsuit feels frivolous even on the surface. But if you dig deeper, there's an even more compelling story, which I personally believe where the goal is to crush new investigations while taking revenge on old ones. In this version, Logan might not even care about winning. Legal battles are expensive, and in the world of money, he's got me beat. So he can try to silence me by weaponizing the law, he can sue me for doing my job, he can sue me for asking questions, and he can sue me for asking for refunds. But it's going to backfire, because I think it reveals Logan as a bully rather than someone who's truly sorry. Because Logan may be a master at convincing people he's changed, but I'm convinced it's the follow-through where things go wrong. You know, the actually changing part. 
There was a time where even I believed Logan was going to fully refund victims. That's why I was so nice to him and tried to help despite him threatening to sue me. But when it came time to pay up, Logan chose a minority refund and to fight the rest of the victims in court who wanted their money. And when I complained about that, Logan went from sorries and thank yous to lawyers and I'm suing you real quick. The irony is it was that same initial belief in Logan's capacity to change that also made me bring up Liquid Marketplace to help stop potential problems. And yet here we are. The company is now accused of being a multi-layered fraud by the OSC. And the CEO, who I tried to talk to multiple times, is alleged to have misappropriated money. This is despite me trying to talk to Logan directly many times as he asked. Maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me personally, not my manager, Jeff, who is not me, me, Steven. Well, I did try to reach out personally and I got sued and threatened a day later. That I think says a lot about Logan's supposed change and his belief in accountability. Maybe the person he really believes in accountability for is not himself, but me, specifically when I try to get accountability from him.